Okay, well, you're talking about diabetes, which is insulin resistance. And most people get insulin resistance from eating too much sugar and too much carbs. What about those who don't have insulin resistance, which most people actually do at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but we're eating the holiday food and the cakes and the, the eggnog and maybe more alcohol than we're used to. Um, so I want to talk about just sugar and the mm -hmm. wrong foods, how that affects the immune system and the gut. But then I also want to talk about the stress that yeah. we're all under right now because of the holidays. And it could be good stress, but it's stress. And I think that's what hit me. It, I went into the weekend stressed, all good. My college kids are home. There's extra kids to feed. I've got extra work to do. I've got all, you know, all the holiday stuff piling up. And I think it was just this perfect storm yeah. The weekend. So let's first talk about sugar and some of the foods and how that affects the immune system and then the stress. Yeah. So the, the problem with foods like sugar and, and if you're eating cakes and things that have gluten in it and all that, right? And you're normally not eating those things. So your body's not even used to dealing with them. What they will do is they will cause temporary acute uh, leaky gut inflammation right so uh, especially if we add drinking with it and all that and you add the stress stress is in fact one of the most profound sources of leaky gut and so you can have acute leaky gut most people who consume gluten will have uh what they call transient intestinal permeability which is leaky gut for a period of time right it may be a few hours in some individuals it may be one or two days in other individuals right depending on how quickly your gut can repair itself the problem with that is when, when you induce those things, you're causing inflammation throughout the body. That inflammation negates proper immune response, right? And so now what you have is this recipe of all these people coming together, so exposing each other to things, right? So somebody's gonna be in there with a cold or latent flu or something like that. So now you're gain, gaining exposure to things that can make you sick. At the same time, because of what we're eating, drinking, we're stressed, our body's uh, system is not functioning optimally. We have chronic inflammation, or sorry, we have acute inflammation going on, and our immune system is confused, right? And because our immune system is confused, the things we get exposed to have a better chance of taking hold, right? So keep in mind, we're exposed to stuff every day, right? Most people aren't sick all the time because your immune system is doing its thing. It's working and it's doing its job, right? We're literally exposed to things every day. Unless you're staying in a hermetically sealed room or bubble yourself, that's the only way you don't get exposed to things that can make you sick. If you go walking around outside even, the air has tons of microbes in it that can make you sick, right? Our immune system is doing its job like it's supposed to, keeping us healthy for the most part. But in a perfect storm situation where you bring a lot of people together, you've got all of these agents that create inflammation in the body, that inflammation negates the normal function of your immune response, right? So, and, and let me give a quick uh, overview of what the normal function is supposed to look like. So it's understandable why even a little bit of inflammation in a short period of time can negate the proper immune response. So when you're exposed to something, let's say the cold virus, right? You're with a bunch of people, somebody's coughing or, or, or sneezing, and they put some cold virus uh, out into the air. You get exposed to that virus. What's supposed to happen is, again, the microbes in the region, that wherever you got exposed to it, whether it's in your eyes or in your respiratory tract, the microbes in that region go, hey, this doesn't look right right? The cell that I'm next to or on top of is getting infected. And so the microbes start releasing in the leukins, right? And those are things that are supposed to attract the immune system. Now the immune system sees that and gets attracted and comes to the area. The first part of the immune system that responds is called the innate immune system. Now the innate immune system is very quick to respond. The problem with the innate immune system is it's not specific. It's good at understanding an area where there's a problem, but it, it's not very good at understanding what is causing the problem. So what the innate immune system does is it shows up and it just bombards everything in the area, right? Including your own tissue and so on. This is the part of the illness that you feel, right? This is why you feel sick. When the innate immune system finds an infection and starts attacking it, that's when fever comes on, body aches, pains, um, runny nose, you know, all the aches in the stomach and all the, all the symptoms that come along with it, 
are all due to the innate immune system doing its thing. Now, the innate immune system is doing that. It's trying to control the, the reproduction of the infectious agent in the area. And then what's supposed to happen is these other cells are called dendritic cells and macrophages come along to that area where the innate immune system is bombarding things. And it starts grabbing debris and presenting it to the adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system are your T cells and your B cells. Now, what's good about them is they are highly specific to the agent that's causing the issue. They're not going to bombard the area and cause a bunch of damage like the immune, like the innate immune system does. The adaptive immune system is doing just that. It's adapting to that infectious agent, and then it creates tools that are highly specific for that infectious agent, right? So there's this shuttling period. You go through the symptomatic illness where the innate immune system is going crazy and bombarding everything. The, uh, the transitional microbes, like uh, sorry, cells, like the dendritic cells and macrophages show up. They start presenting what they think is the culprit to the T cells and B cells. When the T cells and B cells find the right culprit, they start producing things like antibodies and so on that neutralize the target and shuts down the innate immune system. Now that shutting down of the innate immune system, that presenting of antigens to the adaptive immune system and the amplification of the adaptive immune system all require a healthy microbiome. So if you don't have a healthy microbiome, not only is it, uh, it will the innate immune system take longer to show up, right? Because your microbes aren't uh, shooting up the flares the way they should be. And by the time it shows up, the infection is a bigger problem. But once it shows up and it starts bombarding everything, it takes longer for the transitional uh, cells to come along to present stuff. And it takes even longer for the adaptive immune system to kick in. So then you go through a symptomatic period for even longer period of time. That's why there are some people uh, you know, that can get exposed to the same exact thing. They might feel aches and pains and all that for 24 or 48 hours, and then they feel fine. But during that feeling fine period, it doesn't mean that the infection is gone. It means that it's shifted to the adaptive immune system. So there's no longer the symptomology, right? So that's what you experience. Now, if somebody didn't have all those supplements and have all the things to support their system, if they got the same kind of exposure with you of, uh, that you did with all the same parameters, they will likely have symptoms that you had for 24 hours. They probably have it for three or four days and be kind of knocked out, right? Until the adaptive immune system finally came in and took over. So that shift is really important. That shift depends on the microbiome as well. And if that shift, if the microbiome is dysfunctional, the shift doesn't happen effectively.